This is a Phantom Helix RS 25.5 motor. Uh, this is the base motor. I did not pay for anything fancy or anything like that. Uh, for With some motor companies, uh, one can pay an additional amount to get everything sort of set. Uh, but the thing is, as soon as you change the timing, it throws off the end bell, so you have to adjust it on your own later on. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's worth spending the money or not. If you're just going to leave it as is out of the box, then uh, go for it and then just play with the gearing. Don't touch the timing ever. Uh, but uh, we're going to see how this one does. Uh, so out of the box, this is set at 50 degrees according to the can. Now I've tested uh, many, many motors. Uh, maybe not that many, but I've tested quite a few motors. And uh, depending on the brand and the turns of the motor, because the cans are all the same, right? The exterior and bells, uh, some of them are really far off, and then some of them are pretty close, or some of them will be really far off at uh, low timing, but then they'll be closer uh, to timing as the timing increases, which is interesting. And let's go ahead and connect the yellow. Uh, so I'm going to see how many amps, uh, in the past I used to go at 5 degree increments, I used to go down I believe to 35 degrees, uh, but I stopped it because that's almost useless to go down that low in KVs. So I'm just going to start where the motor is, and my target is to get to about uh, close to 6 amps, so 5.5 amps is good, and then I'll stop there. So let's go timing first, see what the timing is. So we have a 48. Oh, these are really far off. Uh, this is the worst one so far. Uh, so 48. Uh, I mean, there are worst motors, I guess, are set. So again, that just needs to play with the end bell and adjust it. Uh, sometimes that helps a little. So we'll see what this is running. Okay, V. So I generally go to three, six, and then four. So this one's at 4.8 amps, uh, and it's not bad. Uh, so this is 1954 for KV. Uh, that is actually pretty good. I am going to give the rotor strength uh, at the end of this all. Uh, all right, so the end bell is reading 54. The previous one wasn't too far off. The end bell read 50, and it was a 48 average with a peak of 50. So close enough, I guess, for that test. Uh, but here we go. I'm going to go back and do the timing first.
All right, so this one's 51. And we have a 52, uh, 53, and a 49. Uh, it, not, not that bad. So the biggest spread would be four degrees between phase A and phase C. So it's, it's all right. Obviously, the closer they all are together, ideally, they would all be identical. And that would normally be too high. And that's only a three degree difference between phases 48 and 51. Uh, so probably the best place to put this would be at that 50 mark, maybe that 51 mark, uh, which is something that I will be trying. Uh, just putting it there, see how close I can get to about 5.5 amps on this uh, and see if it actually makes a big difference or not. Uh, the reason why is uh, there's a trade-off in heat. Uh, whenever there's amp consumption, there's a trade-off in heat. But one of the things I want to note that is interesting is uh, the amps. This one actually exceeds five amps. With the R1, I was not able to exceed uh, five amps with a 21.5, which is interesting. I do not have a 25.5 at this point for R1. But it's interesting, it's a 25.5, I managed it with the other one I did not, and it was a higher turn motor. Usually higher turns will consume more amps for the same rotor strength, but 25.5s tend to have a weaker rotor. Uh, so going by Trinity, Trinity is a pretty transparent company, I would say, as far as rotor strength. Uh, the spec 25.5s are generally around 1500 gauss, which I'll measure the gauss later on when I do the rotor strength. Uh, but the 21.5 has a uh, higher, higher gauss for the rotor. But it's interesting because it was low KVs. Uh, so I'm not sure. Uh, that's something I have to try to test and think about just a little more. But let me back down the timing. Uh, so a uh, quick one, I've been playing with the N-Bell, so I've got it at 49, and then I have a 50, 50, and 49. Uh, so that's probably the closest I'm going to get it, which is pretty nice. So the only thing I did is I loosened the N-Bell, and then I just tried pushing it over to the side and then tightening it uh, and doing that just to get it aligned a little better. So it just takes a little time, but you can do it. So let me, uh, so I'll actually go ahead and record these numbers since they are different than the others and see if I'm about where I want to be, which is that five, 5.5. 5. 5. Uh, let's go KV. Five point eight. Let me run it like this and see how it does temperature wise. It's under six. Uh, anything over this is just very, very inefficient. Uh, but like I said, the car it is going into is an F one. Pretty light cars. They're just over a kilo. So just over a thousand grams. Uh, I believe it's one thousand twenty five grams. Maybe it's one thousand twenty can't remember at this time. I know I'm overweight, so the car is too. Uh, but uh, I'll try it out, see how it does. Uh, so I'll put the data together and then uh, I'll go ahead and compare them. All right, so the Phantom Rotor, this is what it looks like. Uh, there is a difference in color coding compared to the rotors I've done in the past. Uh, I'm trying to get the measurement here, approximately. Uh, all right, that didn't work, no, it did it. All right, so it's about 24.6, so it's probably going to be at 25. 
that's what it's going to be listed as, and overall will be uh, 2843. Uh, the thickness, this should be about 12.3 for this rotor, and it's just under. Just under. But let me go ahead and see what the strength is. So. Uh, so this is pretty good. Uh, the spread, not too bad. So let's go to the data table now. So as of this video, I do not have uh, the Gauss readings for other 25.5 rotors, uh, but this is it right here. Uh, so 1639, 1606, uh, which is pretty good. Like I mentioned, uh, Trinity advertises theirs on their chart as 1500 plus or minus. Uh, so if we go over here, these are some 25.5 motors, or at least the ones that are uh, worth describing that I've tested. Uh, so here is the Phantom Helix, and I put it right in between this uh, X-Factor slot machine. I don't know why I called it an X-Factor slot machine. Oh, right, right, right. I remember now. Uh, and then the Trinity X-Factor. Uh, but here we go. So uh, if I look at amps, uh, the closest thing will be this 4.8 to this 5.0 and the voltages are different but I mentioned in a previous video testing the phantoms although some of these motors for example the Trinity X factor it seems that as a voltage went up uh, KV went down voltage dropped and there was an inverse relationship when I tested the phantoms, previously phantoms, uh, it was the opposite. Voltage would go up, KV would go up, uh, voltage would go down, KV would go down. It was a slight difference, but still a difference. Keep in mind that KV is supposed to be a constant, therefore it should not depend on voltage. Uh, so for this, I'm going to, I am purposely going to ignore the voltage difference. So ignore RPM because RPM is a product of KV and voltage. Uh, so ignore it because that would be different. So this is the column we want to ignore. Uh, 4.8 and 5.0. Uh, this one's at 2102. And this one is at 1954. Now the amp difference isn't that much, but on these 25.5s it does make quite a difference uh, between motors. But still... Uh, the X factor, I would say, is the much faster motor. Even if I look at this 5.8 versus 6.2, or even the 6.8, that's somewhere in between, uh, 2206 versus 2040, 2133. Uh, so this one's going to be a higher revving motor. This might be a torque motor in comparison, but I will not know until I can get... Uh, one of these rotors out and test it. I just don't have any with me right now when making this, but eventually I'll get one and then I'll talk about it. So, but I will throw in some pointers. So if it turns out this one has lower gauss, that is producing the higher KV because these are both 12.3 diameter rotors. And that would mean this one has the higher gauss, which would make this a torque motor and this one a rev motor. Therefore, in an F1 car, uh, something that's that light, this may be the better motor to go with, uh, just because that much torque isn't needed, versus VTA, because it's a much heavier car, this may be the better motor to go with, and that's a possibility. So all of these motors are great, there's just an application for each and every single one of them. Now X-Factor, I'll take the slot machine over the X-Factor any time, that's my bias. Uh, but let's see uh, what numbers are close. So it's 5.7 uh, versus 5.8. These are close enough. Timing is so close, uh, very close. Amp is very close as well. And there is a massive difference in KV. 
so here 2331 versus this 2040. Now, another note that I'm going to make is comparing it to this one, the X factor is a lot faster revving engine than the slot machine. And the rotors are the same rotors, they're interchangeable. Uh, so Trinity only changed the armature, the can. Uh, they did not change the rotors. So that is something that is fascinating. Uh, now it could be that these two motors, the, the rotors could have been slightly different, but usually a slight difference isn't going to produce uh, a massive difference in KV, uh, but it can. Uh, but here we go. So closest thing, 2330 versus 22. Um, let's say it's 150 kV difference between the two, just because there is a difference here. These are only 100 apart. Uh, so that's how I'm estimating that. But notice this, uh, 4.1, we're at 2092, uh, which is a lot faster than this at higher amps. Uh, so this is the reason why I have a suspension, suspicion it might be rotor strength. If it's not the can, it could obviously be the can. Uh, on the higher turn motors, uh, the Trinity X-Factor turns more KVs than the X-Factor. If I recall correctly, I would have to check the data. Uh, but if we look at the uh, Trinity X-Factor, so I tested this X-Factor with a 13.5 rotor. This is the 1154. If you've seen those videos, uh, you saw the test. Uh, this one is rated at 2250 plus or minus. So that's the gas rating according to Trinity. Keep in mind, plus and minus, that's very important. Uh, but the point is, the this was the exact same can. I just swapped the rotors. That's all I did to them. So same exact can. And the larger diameter and the larger gauss, notice how it turns less KVs uh, compared to these. Uh, so usually if you take two rotors, if they are the exact same strength, uh, the one with the larger diameter will be slower, but more torque. Uh, if you take two rotors that are the exact same diameter, but one of them has higher gauss, the higher gauss will be slower, but more torque. Uh, so that's how you can decide what you need for your application. So if you want more speed, for example, some companies make a 12.1, I think Hobby Wing makes a 12.1, uh, very strong magnetic field, that one's very good for modified if you want speed on a low turn motor. Uh, that's a great way of doing it. Uh, but if you have a high turn motor, for example, this would be great for a crawler. Uh, large diameter, there's very little gap between the rotor magnets and the coils. Uh, and it gives low KV, but it's because of the torque. High gauss, large diameter. This is what you would want to run, for example, in a crawler. Uh, if you were running some of these motors, for example. Uh, but uh, this is it. So Phantom Helix, based on this, it is uh, slow revving. Uh, I'll have to run in my car and see what I think. But uh, as far as this video, this is it. I hope this information was informative or at least entertaining. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you in the next one.